الحمد لله الذي أحسن كل شيء خلقه وبدأ خلق الإنسان من طين والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله الله سبحانه وتعالى with his wisdom and mercy he elevates the status of people above other people and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his justice he lowers the status of people below other people and Allah with his mercy and wisdom increases from the reward for some people more than other people and from the greatest rewards of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the greatest bounties on people is the bounty of and nubuwa the prophethood which is a bounty that no one can achieve or attain with hard work or dua or any kind of work but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses whomever he wants and sends them as prophets and messengers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Allahu a'lamu haythu yaj'alu risalata and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends the prophets and the messengers as a guidance to all mankind to guide people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for people to know how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says قُلْ لَوْ كَانَ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَلَائِكَةُ يَمْشُونَ مُطْمَئِنِّينَ لَنَزَّلْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ مَلَكَ الرَّسُولَ Say, if there was angels, if there were angels that live on earth and they live with tranquility, they live peacefully Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was also going to send them a prophet and a messenger to guide them had to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <coughs> and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent 124,000 prophets and messengers but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevated the status of some of those prophets above other prophets and messengers so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose from the prophets messengers and made the status of the messengers higher than the status of the prophets so every messenger is a prophet and not every prophet is a messenger. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose from the messengers five who are named Ulul Azmi Minar Rasul. Five, five messengers. They are the best of the messengers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made them the, the, the best five messengers. Nuh, Ibrahim, Musa, Isa, and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to be the best of all mankind and the best of all the prophets and messengers. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna Allah astafa kinanata min walidi Ismail. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had chosen kinana to be the best from the offsprings of Ismail alayhi wa sallam. Wastafa Quraishan min kinana. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose, had chosen Quraysh to be the best from the offsprings of kinana. Wastafa min, Qur min Quraishan bani Hashim. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose bani Hashim to be the best of Quraysh. Wastafani min Bani Hashim. Then chose me to be the best of Bani Hashim. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, Ana khiratun min khira. I am the best that came from the best. Since we are in the month of Ramadan now, a month where people go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a month of reconciliation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the best way to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the best way to reconcile with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the best way to build that relationship and improve your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is through what? It's through the sunnah and the seerah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Through the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. In the seerah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, it is not stories that we learn. It is, not, it is not lessons. It is not dates. It is not incidents. Is there an announcement, Mustafa? Is there a car block on anyone? Alhamdulillah. <laughs> It is not just incidents or dates that we talk about. But when we talk about the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we try to learn how he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam lived his daily life. Then how he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was in the battlefield in the time of jihad. And how he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was merciful to people and how he applied that mercy. And how he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was with his worship to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was obedient to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Unfortunately, we look at people today, they only take from the seerah, from the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, what they choose or what they want. And they apply it according to their nafs, to their hawa, according to their desire. So you find a person takes on the side of jihad and applies that in the wrong way, till he starts oppressing people. 
And then you find another person takes the side of rahmah only, the mercy from the life of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and also applies that in the wrong way, and till the ummah became weak, where you find people the ummah is being attacked, and we have to stand up and defend ourselves, but they only talk about mercy, so the ummah became weak, and you find people they only focus on the side of ibadah and worship, and they neglect the other side. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam combined between all that and gave everything its rights. When it was time for jihad, he was the best of mujahid. When it was time for mercy, he knew where to apply the mercy. When it was time for the ibadah, he was the best in his ibadah. But at the same time, Aisha radiallahu anha, she said, كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في خدمة أهله فإذا نودي للصلاة فكأنه لا يعرفنا. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was in his life, what? In the service of his people, of his household, serving his family. فإذا نودي للصلاة and it's time for salah as if he does not know them. That's how, that's how the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was. So we need to balance. We need to balance and learn, learn balance our life. The same way the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam balance his life. My dear brothers, the seerah, as I mentioned before, it is not only stories we read, but it's worshiping Allah subhanahu wa taala the best way. How? According to the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So you need to understand when you read the seerah or you listen to the seerah. First thing you need to do is put yourself there. Live the seerah. Imagine you were there. Live the seerah yourself. Abu Bakr radiallahu an. And look how the companions applied the character of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in their lives, and how much they loved the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Abu Bakr radiallahu an. One year after the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had passed away, he stood up to give khutbah or deliver a sermon to the Sahaba. So he said, "Ra'ayt al-Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam." قام عام أول مقامي هذا. Okay. Abbaqar said, I saw the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم last year when he was alive. Stood here in this place. And then Abu Bakr رضي الله عنه started crying. Then Abu Bakr رضي الله عنه finally controlled himself. Then he said, I saw the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم last year. Stood in this place. Then Abu Bakr رضي الله عنه started crying. Then Abu Bakr repeated for the third time and he said, I saw the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم last year. Stood in this place. Then Abu Bakr رضي الله عنه started crying. Now you're talking about who? Abu Bakr radiallahu an. Let's just talk about another Sahabi. Bilal radiallahu an was the one that was always calling the adhan at the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But after the death of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Bilal was not able to call the adhan anymore. Why? Because whenever he reaches to the, to the stage where he says, Ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah, Bilal radiallahu an would choke and start crying. Now the Sahaba radiallahu anhum did not lack the sunnah in their life. They are the ones that compiled the sunnah and, 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 and conveyed the sunnah. They're the ones that delivered the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam until it reached us today. Without the Sahaba, without the greatness of the Sahaba and the great work of the Sahaba, we would not have known anything about the sunnah. But it is the, the Sahaba. So did Abu Bakr and Bilal radiallahu anhum miss the sunnah? No. But they missed something more than that. The character of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in their life. So how should we feel in a time when we neglect the sunnah, we do not have the sunnah in our life, and we do not have the character of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa in their lives. Now some people might say, you're talking about sahaba here. They saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa They witnessed him. So of course they understood his character and they are going to miss his character. Let's talk about people who were not sahaba. People that came after the sahaba. There was a tabi'i who saw the sahaba but did not see the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa A tabi'i. His name was Thabit al-Bunani. Thabit al-Bunani rahimahullah. Whenever he used to see the great Sahabi, Anas ibn Malik. And Anas ibn Malik, he served the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for 10 years. Thabit al-Bunani. Whenever he sees Anas ibn Malik, he would go to Anas ibn Malik and kiss his hand. When he, whenever he used to be asked about that, he used to say, this is a hand that touched the hand of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Imam Malik, rahimahullah, the scholar of Medina, Imam Udar al-Hijrah, the, the greatest scholar in Medina at his time. He used to say about his shaykh, about his teacher, Muhammad ibn al-Munkadir. He used to say that my teacher, Muhammad ibn al-Munkadir, whenever he used to mention the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa whenever he wanted to speak about the seer of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammad ibn al-Munkadir would start crying. And we leave his majlis, we leave his gathering, and we're feeling sorry for him because he used to be crying, missing the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And at that man, he did not see the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa But he connected himself 
to the character of the Prophet until he felt that he is living with the Prophet The Sunnah of the Prophet was, was in his life. He lived his life as if he is in the time of the Sahaba and the Prophet And there were people that came after them. Abdullah ibn Mubarak, another great scholar. He used to go every day and hide somewhere. His students used to look for him and never find him. Every day between Asr and Maghrib, Abdullah ibn Mubarak used to hide. And so his students asked him one day, Oh Abdullah ibn Mubarak, where do you go every day between Asr and Maghrib? He used to say, I was visiting the Muhammad I was visiting the Prophet and the companions. So they were amazed by that statement. They asked him, how do you visit Muhammad and his companions? He go, every day between Asr and Maghrib, I go and I read about the seerah, about the life of the Prophet وسلم, and I contemplate upon it until I imagine that I am there, there with them and I reflect that in my own life. Now my dear brothers, we did not see the Prophet we did not get the chance to see the Prophet ﷺ in this life. However, we have a promise from the Prophet ﷺ that we will meet the Prophet ﷺ in Jannah. Not just that. We will meet him near his fountain. And we will drink from the hand of the Prophet ﷺ. But with the condition, the Prophet ﷺ said one day, I miss my brothers, I miss my loved ones. The Sahaba radiallahu anhu, they say, Ya Rasulullah, aren't we your brothers? Aren't we, aren't, we, aren't we your loved ones? They said, you are my companions. But my, my brothers, my loved ones are the ones that come after me, but did not see me. But they loved me as if they have seen me. So we have a promise from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that we will meet him and see him in paradise, but with a condition. What's the condition? To love the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to follow his sunnah, to apply it in your life. Why? Because there's going also to be people who will try to go to the Prophet ﷺ and try to drink from that fountain and try to drink from the hand of the Prophet ﷺ. But before they reach there, the angels will come and push them away. Nabi ﷺ will say, there are my people, my nation. The angels will say, oh, 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 oh Rasulullah, you do not know how much they have changed after you. Nabi ﷺ then will say, suhqan, suhqan, crush it, crush it. So there are people who try, they claim they love the Prophet ﷺ, but they don't truly love him. How do you really prove that you love the Prophet ﷺ? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهِ Allah says to the Prophet, say to your people, that if you really love Allah, then follow me, follow the Prophet ﷺ, يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهِ Allah will love you. So your love to the Prophet ﷺ is a sign of what? Sign of your love to who? To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So prove your love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through proving your love to his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And how do you prove your love to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Is by really applying the love of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa in your life. Not just by reading stories, not just by listening to CDs, not just by reading lines, but apply that in your life. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those that love his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those that, that drink from the fountain of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and drink from the hand of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Aqulu ma tasma'un wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam barak ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa qumu ila salatikum yirhamukumullah.